and I welcome him in. Well dressed, I might add. Take your headphones there too, off the base of your microphone there, John, and yes, slap those on. Anything your head right you there. say, sir. I like the way your <laughs> attitude is today, Mr. Doyle. Good morning to you, and good morning to you, and Mr. Gilstrap and Mr. Miller. How was traffic nice. this morning? <laughs> well, it wasn't. Was it that Bodwell school bus again? <laughs> no. I'm getting ready to leave the house at 7:45. I get this phone call, and um, I have to explain that I'm in a hurry. And the person on the other end is explaining why he called. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then I get outside, and my windshield is frozen over. And I had not anticipated that, so it took me a couple of minutes to scrape the windshield off. And then I get to the end of my lane, and I wait for a school bus. <laughs> so the school bus I apologize <laughs> to you, uh, 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 Mr. Mario, for, for my tardiness. But, uh, and you want to be my latex salesman. That's a line from Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, I, I, I never saw Seinfeld. You never watched an episode of Seinfeld? No, no. I am not a fan of sitcoms. But it was Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld was life. That wasn't it. Was that was a sitcom. sitcom. That's, that's a Hall of that, Fame sitcom. Oh, okay, Rob, that, that, that's like saying if someone says, I don't like spinach, and you say, but this is bird's eye spinach. <laughs> I wouldn't say that because that would be a free commercial for bird's eye. Yeah, it would, that's right. But and as a trained broadcasting professional, is, I do not give away the product is, for free. However, if bird's eye had, 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 bird's eye had bought advertising, then you would, then like, I would be all over. Like, golly, like your spinach for the hour that you're here. Although we did get, um, there was a vegetable product from them we did get once in the frozen food section. And when I opened it up, there was half of a grasshopper in there. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so I, I, I got... I got an envelope. They're edible. I got, apparently, they think so. I got an envelope, <laughs> and I shipped it back to the company with a little letter that explained when I was buying my vegetables, this little friend was included in the product, and I decided that I didn't want it. So I'm giving it back to you. You're being very polite and returning <laughs> and if the you, grasshopper. And if you'd like to eat the grasshopper with your spinach, go right ahead. And they sent me a, a gift certificate of $15 worth of free products. More spinach with grasshoppers. <laughs> <laughs> they said, usually we grind those up and you can't see them. <laughs> Probably close to 40 years ago, Joy and I were just recently married, and it was an anniversary trip. We came to Shepherdstown to stay at the Bavarian Inn. And we were having dinner at what was then the Yellow Brick Bank, oh, yeah. which was a really high-end restaurant at yeah. the time. And uh, it was an event thing. We got together with another couple. We were having a beautiful evening. And I went and I picked up the sugar bowl. And as I lifted the lid, a cockroach came out. Mm -hmm. So to prevent that scene where <laughs> my, some people in my family don't react well to insects. So, Especially cockroaches <laughs> in their sugar bowl. <laughs> so I, I, I covered it up real quick. And then I took it up to the maitre d'. And I didn't want to create a scene. And I said, um, we, have, we didn't make a reservation for, for this one. And <laughs> they made the scene. It was the same, it's kind of that same, you know, yeah. ah, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I got a free bottle of wine out of it. So. That's better than $15 for the free grasshoppers. Yeah. That's what I ended up getting in the, in the whole scenario. John, I want to uh, move on to our subject matter of the day today, and that's for an announcement you would like to make. Yeah, I'm going to run for the state senate. You're running for state senate? Yes. And you came about this decision when? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. Why State Senate? Um, I would very much like to be back in the legislature. And there are a number of issues that I think have not been handled well. And I think I could help. Uh, and I will, I will, there are about a half a dozen of them that I would like to list here, if it's okay if we start off that way. Mm -hmm. And then you can ask me questions about those or anything else you want. Right. Is there anybody else running on the Democrat side? Not that I know of. And which which seat is this? This would be the seat that Patricia Rucker has, the 16th district, which covers all of Jefferson County and about, I think, 40 to 45 percent of Berkeley County, a little bit less than half mm -hmm. of Berkeley County. Yeah. OK. What are the main issues as you see them? I think we need to save our public schools. We have public school teachers that are fleeing West Virginia for their economic lives. And it's got to stop. It hit crisis proportion years ago, and we've just got to do something about it. And at the same time, the same thing is happening, incidentally, with human service caseworkers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, 
just terrible, and, and we've been kicking the ball down the road, kicking it or can or ball or rock or, or whatever you want to call it. We've just been saying, well, let's just kick it down the road a little far. It doesn't work. Um, I want to protect our air and water, and I want to protect our elections, too. Uh, I believe in preserving the right to vote and also making it secure. And I'll give you a couple of examples here. I think there, that state law should mandate that every county that has at least 35,000 people should have a minimum of two early voting locations. And any county with a minimum of 50,000 people should have a minimum of three early voting locations. Uh, they can have any beyond that that they want, uh, but that should be the bare minimum. And also, uh, in terms of election security, uh, we have a Secretary of State now, Mac Warner, who, who claims to believe in election security, but he pulled us out of a group called ERIC. It's a national clearinghouse whereby, let's say, Rob, if you were to move from uh, one state to another, and let's say you moved from Maryland to West Virginia, that clearinghouse, uh, West Virginia would immediately report your arrival when you registered to that clearinghouse, and Maryland would be immediately informed that you were no longer a registered voter in Maryland. You wouldn't have to do anything about it. They would just know. Mac Warner pulled us out of that clearinghouse. Mm -hmm. He said it was because he thought it was partisan. Uh, more than half of the states in it had election officers who were Republican. Uh, I don't think it was partisan, but if, if you think it is, the answer is to fix that, not just pull out of the whole thing. So that's another one. Uh, we have an abortion law in West Virginia that effectively bans abortions. There are a couple of exceptions which are so narrow and have so many rules attached to them that very few people could, could, could ever use them. Uh, polls have shown that West Virginians... Uh, think this is a bad law. And we had a referendum on this issue uh, in 2018, five years ago, uh, which was very, very close, about three and a half percentage points on the pro-life side as opposed to the pro-choice side. That was before the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade with the Dobbs decision. Opinion all over the country in, in every state has transformed itself. We need another referendum to see exactly where the people of West Virginia stand on this issue. Uh, another issue that I care about, and this is a new one for me because I just heard about it a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago. Right to repair. When you buy a vehicle, I don't care whether it's a sedan or an SUV or a, a truck or a tractor. The company, John Deere, General Motors, you name it, keeps all the information required to repair that vehicle as proprietary. Mm -hmm. I think that should belong to the consumer. So if the consumer wants to go to a private repair shop or repair it himself or herself, they should be allowed to do so. And we just simply need to pass a law that says people have a right to repair their vehicles. Okay. That's a that's some of them. <laughs> and the the district you're running in, John, what is the breakdown of Democrats, uh, registered uh, voters, and uh, in, independent Democrat and Republicans? I don't know about the district. Uh, I do. I, I've studied Jefferson County. The last breakdown I saw, which was a couple of months ago, thirty six percent of the people in Jefferson County are independent or minor party, uh, and it's a really tiny number that's minor party. It's almost all independent. 35% Republican, 29% Democrat. Uh, I don't know about the Berkeley County part. Um, mm -hmm. I'm obviously going to be looking into that. I do believe, uh, and particularly Jefferson County's history, it, ten it tends to swing wildly from one direction to another. I call it a purple county, but it's really an alternating red and blue county. Uh, and it's not most purple counties you think, you know, vote kind of down the middle most elections. Jefferson historically does not do that. So we'll see. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I shall be the underdog in this election, uh, regardless of who wins the Republican primary, but I do think I have a legitimate chance of winning, or otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. And what percentage of the electorate did you say is Jefferson County in this district? It's, I, it's a little bit over half. It's around 50, between 55 and 60 percent, I think. 
maybe 56, something like that. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, the last figures I saw on that were a year ago after they did redistricting, so I'll have to look at it again. But the population is right about 55%, but in term, and, and that obviously stays, the official population stays for 10 years. Mm-hmm. I don't know about the registered voters. That really changes weekly. Matt? What type of a challenge do you believe that presents? Uh, obviously, you're very well known throughout the eastern panhandle as a whole, but have been elected more through Jefferson County in the past. And in a portion of Jefferson County. Okay, yeah. so what is yeah. that that um, that challenge now having to lure in, if you will, or pull in those votes from Berkeley County? Uh, well, the challenge is to not just in Berkeley, but in, in the parts of Jefferson mm-hmm. uh, th- that uh, um, uh, I haven't represented, is to persuade people that uh, I will bring uh, a, 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 a sensible p- position to the issues and try to work uh, with everybody. And I, I've done this when I was in the legislature for 26 years. I was, and particularly when the Democrats were in the majority, uh, Speaker Bob Kiss very often assigned me the role of finding a compromise in a both between the two wings of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. You had really three different positions and and he said, you know, Doyle, go figure this one out, get them all together and 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 I don't knock heads. You don't do it that way. What you do is sit down and say, "Okay, folks, what's the problem? How are we going to solve it?" And just be calm about it, and, and you can usually come up. Most people are people of goodwill, of, of whatever party they're in. And, and once, once everybody agrees on what the problem is, you can usually find a solution. You mentioned it was just a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. that you kind of came to this conclusion. Obviously, there's been a lot going on in Jefferson County with countywide politics. There were possibilities there. What led you to say this is where you feel you can serve best? Um, in, in part because I have served in the legislature a lot. Uh, I, I know how the thing works. <laughs> it's uh, And also, I was waiting to see... If anybody else that I thought would be a good candidate would run, and when it became apparent to me that nobody was coming forward, I said, okay, I'd like to do this. There's not anybody else that I think uh, uh, who would do a good job that apparently wants to do it, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, you put the two together. It's been a challenge for Democrats sometimes to step forward and say, I'm going to run for an office the way this state has turned Republican. Are you hopeful that your willingness to say, hey, this is a seat I want to jump into may also be an encouragement to others within the Democratic Party to say, you know what, let's go for it? I sure hope so. Uh, I, I, I do not uh, – it hadn't occurred to me that – that I might have the the clout the the psychological <laughs> clout to inspire people to do that, but if it does, that's wonderful. Yeah, John Gilstrap, you let off the, the list of things you want to accomplish. The very first one on there was to save the public education system. You're running against a senator who was chair of the education committee or whatever. Well, we don't know if I'm running against her or not. Well, Espinosa is also challenging in that primary. Yes. Yeah, I will be facing the winner of the Republican primary between Rucker and Espinosa. I see. Okay, so yeah. backing up, if uh, – Paul was also I, the education chair in the House at one time. So Right, yeah. And I, and I kind of forgot about the whole primary system there for a second. So, <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Two, Gilstrap. Yeah, I know, yeah, two, <laughs> two, two stages to this thing. So uh, what have – it's a zero-sum game. So to in, mm-hmm. no matter how it goes, you, if you win, you ask a Republican. What have the Republicans done wrong by way of the education system? We have just about the lowest paid public school teachers in the country. Even after the big strike they had about three years ago, uh, they ended up uh, with, a, w- with a pittance of a raise. It's funny. Uh, a number of the Republicans referred to that as the biggest raise for public school teachers in the state's history. It was actually one of the smallest. The biggest raise in history was back in 1990 uh, when, when the, 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 t- the teacher strike of 1990, and as a result of that, they were given a three-year program, 10%, 10%, 10%. It moved us from dead last to something like 28th in the country in average teacher salary. Now, that was a raise. 
We haven't had anything like that since then, and we need something like that now. Uh, we, we need an across-the-board raise of, of, of significance, and we also need locality pay in addition to that. Now, I remember about 10 years ago, uh, back before the Republicans took over the leadership of, of both houses of the legislature, I remember up until then for years hearing my Republican colleagues say, as soon as we get the majority, you people in the eastern panhandle are going to get your locality pay. I've been pumping for it for 30 years. Well, it's been, what, nine years now since they've had that, and we don't, we haven't had it. Uh, it, it is a matter of political will. Uh, I think now, with the percentage of the legislature that represents the Eastern Panhandle, we ought to be able to pull it off. And uh, I, uh, so when you put those two things together, that will send a message to teachers, you, you, you don't have to leave. We you, need you here. Do you think that the link is that direct to teacher pay? We are at the bottom, not bottom, thank heavens for Mississippi, right? It keeps us from being the bottom in terms of school test scores and all. If we wave a magic wand. No, we, Mississippi and, has now moved ahead of us. Oh, have they? Well, God bless them. Yeah. So, in fact, they jumped ahead of about five states last year. Okay. So if we wave a magic wand and we pay every teacher $100,000, you know, pick, pick a number. Do you really think that has a direct result on the, the test scores and the performance of children who are just not going to school? The truancy rate is huge. The truancy rate among teachers is huge. Among bus drivers is huge. It's the, do you think because it's okay? of the salaries? You really think it's a, that direct? Yes, attack? and I and I think you can look. The states that pay well do not have truancy problems among employees or among students. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen that data. So the. Well, look at Maryland next door. Right. And Virginia. Well, that's a different They, they have truancy, certainly, but they don't have them at the rates that we have them. You also have an entirely different population. I mean, let's be honest. The, the education levels in Montgomery County and Fairfax County and Loudoun County and... You're making my point. Well, no, no. I'm not talking about, I'm not, I'm talking about parental <laughs> education levels. I mean, the, the emphasis on reading in schools and uh, it, it's different in Virginia and Maryland than, than it is here. And it's because their states have populations that are relatively well educated we do not and it's our fault we do not we've had this problem with our public schools for 20 years or more and we've just got to just stop it it's it's clear if we keep on doing what we're doing we're going to keep on having what we're having john doyle our guest here this morning he has declared for the state senate and uh Always a pleasure to visit with Mr. Doyle here. So a couple questions for you getting off of education here for a moment, John, and uh, talking about the state's economy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, Form Energy, I bring that up because Form Energy within the Republican Party was a, a lightning rod, and that had to do <laughs> with, this, with should the state be getting in the economic development business is really what's at the root of this and be fronting money for uh, multi-jillion dollar corporations. Uh, let me let me take the question from thirty thousand feet first, mm -hmm. and then we'll uh, uh, begin to land the plane. There's a couple of of, of, <laughs> of uh, <laughs> metaphors that probably should not be mixed, but I, generally speaking, don't like the idea of government handing out bribes to companies to move to their location, whether it's state government or local government. However, yeah, however, there are situations where I would support it. And and one was I, I wasn't there when Form Energy was passed, but I was there when Nucor was passed. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of criticism from my constituents back in Jefferson County for supporting the Nucor plant. Uh, and it, it, it came back to the fact that Rockwell had gotten a pilot program mm -hmm. and everybody was opposed to that. So now they're saying you're get, doing the same thing down here that you oppose for Rockwell. And I said, there are some fundamental differences. One, the area where Nucor went, serious unemployment problems, major economic problems, much different than Jefferson County. Secondly, the jobs at Nucor were going to be something like $80,000 a year, way, way higher than is normal for that area. The jobs at, 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 uh, 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 at, at Rockwell 
really were about average for the Jefferson, for Jefferson County. So you, there are a number of things that you have to consider when you decide whether or not to support something like this. So I think uh, 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 Nucor was an exceptional situation. Um, I, w- I kind of laughed about the form energy thing because many people who had always had advocated pilot programs and TIFs, you know, tax increment financing, that sort of stuff, said, oh, we can't do it for form energy because it's woke. You know, I, uh, I, I, I think when you uh, uh, economic development should be simply uh, can we uh, if we can create an economy that improves the, the, the livelihood of, of a local population without damaging the environment in that local population doesn't make any difference to me. You know, whether they're left wing, right wing, uh, dead center or whatever, we, we, if we're going to support something like that, support it regardless of the ideology you think the company might have. Matt, about two minutes left. You mentioned the protection of air and water earlier, and you're talking mm-hmm. about some of those same issues in these investments and so forth. Uh, do you feel that we are not living up to what we should be as a state in the protection of air and water? Does does Rockwell even come into that picture? Because I know that was some of the arguments against them in Jefferson County. Now, um, I, I, I think Rockwell does come into the picture in a minor sense. Okay. Um, it's... Uh, uh, I, I do think, excuse me, I do think that the DEP is beginning to do a better job of regulating their emissions. I don't think they're there yet, but I have some optimism, optimism that they're going in the right direction. We'll see. Where I'm, where I'm really coming from is, is this question of PFAS, uh, the forever chemicals. Ohio just won a lawsuit against PFAS manufacturers a PFAS manufacturer, uh, Chemors, which used to be DuPont, uh, which had the Washington works where a Teflon was created. The, the movie Dark Waters was mm-hmm. about that. Uh, Ohio just won a $110 million lawsuit against Chemors. West Virginia hasn't even filed one. And this happened in West Virginia. That's the, the the dramatic difference. And Ohio, I don't think anybody would argue that Ohio is a woke state these days. So is that legislation that's needed, or is that something that, say, I, the attorney general's well, office Well, the attorney be? general should have done it, but the legislature can pass a statute instructing the attorney general to file a suit. Yeah, uh, you can handle it either way. The attorney general is actually our next guest. Well, you might want to ask him why he hasn't filed that lawsuit, because mm-hmm. clearly he would win it. <laughs> be a feather in his cap, particularly if he'd have done it early. <laughs> Final question for Mr. Doyle. Judge, as a practical matter, and good luck with the campaign, you would be the fourth Democrat in the in the chamber, I believe, yes. if if you win. If the other three, how do, you, how do you how how do you actually get a voice? We have we have dreams, and we have desires, and we have political plans, but how do you actually get the voice? Well, I've served. Uh, when I'm in the minority and in the majority, and everybody's got a voice if they want to use it and they know, and they know how. Uh, you go ask Larry Faircloth. For years, Larry Faircloth represented South Berkeley when we had a two-to-one or better Democratic majority, and Larry got a lot of things done. And it was because he was willing to work with the Democrats. He f- was philosophically very opposed to a number of things, but he would come in and say, guys, you know, here's how, here's my idea of how to fix this. And I worked with him a lot on that. Uh, the, the other point I would make is this, uh, John Gilstrap. Uh, West, one of the reasons West Virginia is in its sad state is that except for a brief period of two years, for the last 90 years, we re, we've had super majorities of one party or another. I think it's important that the voters stop and think, wouldn't it be better if we had something like a 60-40 House and a, and, a, and, a, and a 2014 Senate uh, for several years and force these parties to, to, to uh, compromise with each other. The, a number, I think most states with, uh, with uh, uh, powerful economies, uh, or many states with powerful economies like Pennsylvania, have that ca- type of situation. So uh, I really think we should try it. We haven't. 
Mr. Doyle, final word is yours, sir, if you have another one. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well the, I, 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 that sounds like a sword of Damocles you put over my head. No, sir. Uh, uh, com. Uh, is, is the website, and uh, I will be filing pre-candidacy papers either later today or, or tomorrow, uh, depending on the schedule for the rest of the day here. So uh, uh, I ask for your support, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to have some fun. I'm glad you're in the race. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> John Doyle, thank you so much.